Well, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, this is truly an honor. It's been a very emotional day. I have to say, first of all, I smell like a submarine. I have been on the USS Razorback. What an incredible gift you have here in this community to have that uh, submarine here in town and, and to have the HOGA. That's going to be great. But thank you to the Clinton School for having me here. This is truly an honor. And thank you to the Congressman for getting in touch with me. And um, I have kind of some notes here that I go from, but mostly my presentation is from the heart. Sometimes when it comes from the heart, there's tears involved, so I'll have to give you a heads up for that right away. But um, my name is Kelly Sullivan. Um, I'm from Waterloo, Iowa, and um, I'm a third grade teacher, and I'm also a soccer mom. I have two kids, and uh, I'm always driving them around to soccer practices. But I'm playing hooky today. My third graders are back in Iowa with a, a substitute teacher. We had to pull the map down, you know, so I could show them where Arkansas was, and they thought that was great. And then I'm staying at the gorgeous Peabody Hotel. Amazing. So we had to get on YouTube, you know, to show the ducks and all that, and they thought that was great. But in, in Iowa, we actually thought that the ducks had their own suite. So my third grader said, Miss Lackron, you need to talk to them at the front desk and see if you can stay in the room with the ducks. <laughs> so I didn't get that to happen, but I did go down and see them this morning and took some pictures so I can take those back. But anyway, like I said, I teach third grade, so if I bend down to tie your shoes, please do not be alarmed. But um, I have a couple slides to show you, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the Sullivan brothers, and talk a little bit about what it was like growing up a Sullivan, and then also being a sponsor of a Navy ship, which I'd like to do that right now, too, by giving a big shout out. This is my Sullivan pin, my crest. I have a little warship down in Mayport, Florida called USS the Sullivans, and I really appreciate all the service that my crew members do. OK, I am the granddaughter of Albert Sullivan. Albert is the one that's in the middle. Um, out of the five boys, he was the youngest of the five. He was only 19 years old when, when, when he was killed. Um, he was the only one, though, that was married, married to my best friend, Catherine Mary. She's still alive and is nine, just turned 90 years old in Waterloo, Iowa. And they had a son, Jimmy Sullivan, my dad, who also lives in Waterloo. The boys grew up in Waterloo. They were um, kind of typical um, Irish Catholic boys who liked to drink beer and chase women. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, but they were great boys. Uh, Joe rode a motorcycle. He was a Harley guy and was in a club called the Waterloo uh, Blackhawk Motorcycle Club. They also liked fishing because we have the Cedar River there. And um, they were also very involved in their church, St. Mary's Parish. When the boys, the boys also worked at a meat packing plant called Rath Meat Packing Plant. And they also had a sister named Genevieve, who I'll talk about later as well. George and Frank, the two oldest of the boys, served in the Navy before Pearl Harbor. But when Pearl Harbor was bombed, they had a good friend named Bill Ball from Fredericksburg, Iowa, who was on the, the USS Arizona. So when Pearl Harbor was bombed, the boys decided that they would all go into the, to the Navy because George and Frank had already served in the Navy. Now, a lot of people don't know, though, that my grandfather, Al, was not going to go. Um, of course, he had a wife and a child, so he was going to stay back with the family. But my, my grandmother encouraged him to go because she said, you guys stick together. And that's the motto of my ship, USS the Sullivans. We stick together. So she encouraged them to go together. And the boys went down to the recruiting station and asked if they could all be on the same ship. They said, we want to be together, but we, we must all be on the same ship. And the Navy said, we can't make you any promises. Being stubborn Irishmen, they left and went home. And then George wrote a letter. George was the oldest and the leader of the group. And he wrote a letter to the Navy asking special permission for them all to serve on the same ship. And the Navy granted that permission to them. They were on the ship, the USS Juno, which was a light cruiser, um, a newly commissioned ship out of New York. One of my favorite letters that I've seen that the boys wrote, Joe wrote it. And he had, a, like I said, he was the one that was in the motorcycle club and had a Harley. So if you know anyone who has a Harley, they, they really love their motorcycles. And he said, this ship is just as fine as my motorcycle. So he loved that ship as much as he loved his bike. There were actually five sets of brothers that were on the USS Juno. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, once they got out to the, to the war, they realized how bad it was. And the captain talked to the brothers and recommended that they split up because there were also the four Rogers brothers on the USS Juno. So most of the brothers did split up. 
and the Sullivan boys had planned on splitting up at the next port visit. Excuse me. The boys had a really great time in the Navy, though, before they headed over to the war. They got a lot of publicity uh, because there were five good-looking boys from Iowa joining the Navy, so they were in the newspaper a lot. As a matter of fact, Joe, they started receiving love letters from girls back then. Yes, they did. And Joe uh, met a great gal from Philadelphia and, and proposed to her before he went over to the war. It's kind of like eHarmony back then, writing letters back and forth. They also had the opportunity to meet one of their heroes, uh, uh, the Irish boxer Jack Dempsey, who had a restaurant in New York. And one of my favorite pictures, which I don't have that slide though, is a picture of the boys with Jack Dempsey shortly before they left for the war. The boys were in the Battle of Guadalcanal, and the ship, the USS Juno, went down November 13th, 1942. Um, the story goes that George actually survived the initial torpedo. He was a gunner's mate which means that he'd be topside outside the ship. And when the torpedo hit, the people that were topside were the only ones that survived. Anyone that was in the shell of the ship did not. And supposedly he, he made it. And um, I've actually met all 10 survivors of that ship, 10 heroes. And everyone was covered with oil from the blast and you couldn't recognize anybody, and George was swimming from life raft to life raft, wiping people's faces, trying to find his brothers. In my heart, I like to think that he went down with the ship, but that is the story that, that they've said, that, and that eventually uh, there was a shark nearby that, that got him. The news of the boy's death did not come very quickly. Back then, the communications, they didn't have that. The boys wrote letters a lot. They were very, very close to their family, and the letters stopped coming in, in November. And it was January, and they hadn't received any letters. There was a young sailor from Waterloo that wrote a letter to his mom that had been over in Guadalcanal and had said, isn't it terrible what happened to the Sullivan boys? So that woman had to go tell my great-grandmother the rumor that had happened. I actually have a copy of a letter that my great-grandmother wrote to the Navy Department asking about her boys. I have a hard time getting through it, but I'll try. It says, Waterloo, Iowa, January 1943. Bureau of Naval Personnel. Dear sirs, I'm writing in regards to a rumor going around that my five sons were killed in action in November. A mother from here came and told me she got a letter from her son and he heard my five sons were killed. It is all over town now and I am so worried. My five sons joined the Navy together a year ago, January 3rd, 1942. They are on the cruiser USS Juno. The last I heard from them was November 8th, that is it was dated November 8th, US Navy. Their names are George Francis Joseph, Madison, and Albert. If it is so, please let me know the truth. I am to christen the USS Tawasa February 12th at Portland, Oregon. If anything has happened to my five sons, I will still christen the ship as it was their wish that I do so. I hated to bother you, but it has worried me so that I wanted to know if it was true. So please tell me. It was hard to give five sons all at once to the Navy, but I am proud of my, my boys that they can serve and help protect their country. George and Francis served four years on USS Hobie, and I had the pleasure to go aboard their ship in 1937. I am so happy the Navy has bestowed the honor on me to christen the USS Tawasa. My husband and daughter are going to Portland with me. I remain sincerely Mrs. Alita Sullivan, 98 Adams Street, Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, a, a few weeks after that, the Navy uh, came to the door. Usually they'd send a telegram, but they sent a Navy uh, admiral to the do door to tell them about the loss of their five boys. But the amazing part about that is my great-grandfather, Tom Sullivan, who was um, a conductor on the Illinois Central Railroad, he still went to work that day. 
because he was carrying war freight to the troops. After the boys were killed, my great-grandparents went on a war bond tour, and they traveled all around the United States, talking to people, talking to the troops, talking to sailors, and, and raising money for the war tour and the war bonds. And I think that's part of the reason why they're still talked about today, is the way they persevered. You know, the Sullivans were really about perseverance, and they continued on and made sure that people realized that we need to support our troops, and we need to support our country. Uh, one of my favorite video clips of my great-grandmother is when she said, my boys did not die in vain. So I'm really proud of the way that they continued and went around the country talking to people. Um, I had the honor to christen the ship, USS the Sullivans, in 1995. And when I went up there to christen the ship, it was a very, very powerful experience. And I could feel my great-grandmother's presence as long, along with my grandfather's and knowing that, that the story needs to be told, not because of the five Sullivan brothers and their sacrifice, because everybody sacrifices in wartime. That's the one thing I've definitely learned growing up with Sullivan is that there's sacrifice everywhere. But it's so important to honor our veterans. And growing up with Sullivan, that's definitely what I feel. And being a third grade teacher, I feel so blessed to have the opportunity to tell kids the stories of our veterans. Which, by the way, you might not know this, but you have homework. Yes, you do. I'm a teacher, and I get to give out homework today. I have, I have an invitation for you, I have homework for you, and I also have a blessing for you. But that's the big message that I like to do, is make sure my students and all children understand the importance of our veterans. Each Veterans Day, I show the movie, The Fighting Sullivans. Has anyone seen that movie in here? Oh, it's a great movie. I cry every time. I, I just can't help it. But um, we, we just had a big flu outbreak on Veterans Day, so several of my kids couldn't be there to watch it, so they were so upset. But I just send the videos home with them so they can watch it with their family. But um, I feel honored to be able to tell kids the story of the Sullivans, and not just the Sullivans, but we have Navy people that come in to talk to the students. Um, a story I told this morning when we were at the submarine, I, I, I'm a Hawkeye, so I bleed black and gold, but I also am Navy, so I bleed blue and gold. But anyway, we talk about the Navy quite a bit, and I have Navy captains that come to visit the classroom and stuff. And so sometimes we talk a little bit about Navy lingo, like the scuttlebutt is the drinking fountain, the restroom is called the head. Well, my principal had decided to come in to do an impromptu observation in my classroom, which you get a little nervous when that happens. So anyway, my lesson's going along great, and one of my students raises their hand and said, Ms. Sullivan? And I said, yes, hoping they're going to ask a great intelligent question. I need to use the head, they said. <laughs> what? Um, one of the things that my great-grandmother did, um, Alita Sullivan, that I thought was great was after the war bond tour ended, because what I've been told is, is they were gone so much that they never really had time to process what had happened to them. You know, the newspapers were there and they were traveling all around the United States. After the war bond tour ended, that's when it really hit home. But they would actually have sailors that would come back from the war and would just show up at their doorstep and say, hi, you know, I'm here and I was over in Guadalcanal. I just wanted to say, I'm so sorry for your loss. And being the good Irish woman she was, she'd say, are you hungry? Come on in. And then my great-grandmother probably gave him a beer. But um, so they, they hosted him. Actually, one guy came and he stayed for six months. So they did. They had, I'm not kidding. They had people come quite a bit. And um, I think that's really super. And I, I continue with that. A lot of the, my shipmates come through Waterloo and they'll stop in. But I, it was kind of funny because one of my students, my, our kids were on the same soccer team. And the dad said, you know, Josie came home the other day, though, and she said, Miss Lachran, she has sailors coming and going to her house all the time. <laughs> so... But I enjoy having them come to visit. And a lot of times the sailors, when they're, especially if they're heading out to California for, for a, a special schooling or something like that, they'll stop into Waterloo, which that's the invitation I have for you too. I'm gonna go through some of the slides here. This picture, I believe, was taking, taken on the Juno, but I know they had some other pictures they took. That's a picture, we have the lone sailor statue. And um, I'm trying to remember, this was taken quite a while ago. This was in, right in front of our museum, but we've since moved it. We just opened up a museum four years ago um, on the anniversary of the death of the boys. 
it's a gorgeous museum, and that's the invitation I have for you. I would really love it if you came to Waterloo, Iowa to come see our museum. It's called the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum. And your campaign for the HOGA, which is absolutely amazing, which I tr truly support that, and I can't wait to come back to Little Rock when the HOGA is here. Please invite me. And um, anyway, the, it's, it's a big, there's a lot of work involved in that. So to the congressman and to everyone who's been involved in that, we uh, worked 10 years to get the money for the museum. But that's our lone sailor statue. Those are usually only at military bases. That's one of the only uh, lone sailor statues that's not on a military base. Um, <laughs> The, the baby in the, in the hat and the sailor hat's my dad. That's Jim Sullivan. He joined the Navy when he was only 17. My grandmother had to sign a special letter to allow him to be in the Navy. Um, he served four years in the Navy uh, as an electrician and was a CB and retired as a CB. So I'm proud of my dad's service for that. Um, the, the one on the right is actually, though, my grandpa, Al Sullivan. And my dad is on Matt Sullivan's, Madison's um, lap. Those are the two youngest. That picture was taken. Um, they came back from Great Lakes basic training for a weekend visit. And of course, that's my grandmother and my, my, my great grandmother and my great grandfather, the one that was the conductor on the Illinois Central Railroad. That, I believe, is probably the last picture that might have been taken before um, the boys were killed. That's in the living room um, of the Sullivan home at 98 Adams Street. The home is no longer there, but we have a park, um, Sullivan Park, and there's a great big rock, a big boulder with a plaque where the, the house once stood. And when you come to Waterloo, I'll give you the royal tour. This is the museum. This is the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum that we opened four years ago. Um, it's beautiful. It actually has a replica of the Juno, a great big replica. And my two children, Kelsey and Luke, um, Kelsey's 15 and Luke is 13. Please pray for me. I have two teenagers at home. Uh, they actually got to christen the ship, so it was really neat that they did that. But it's, it's a fabulous facility. We were talking about this, too. The, the opportunities this community has with the submarine and the HOGA here for military re reunions. We get a lot of military reunions in Waterloo, and it's great because I get to go talk to all these Navy sailors and listen to their stories. So you have a lot of opportunity to do so many things with the, the Razorback and the Hoga. That's my firstborn. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm kidding. Um, she also made the cover of, several years ago, C Classic. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? How many people can say that? Um, a lot of people don't realize that only a woman can christen a ship. Typically, um, a woman christens a ship, and you're considered married to the ship. It's a lifetime commitment. But I will tell you that 327 sailors in a Navy ship are a heck of a lot easier to take care of than a husband. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that, uh, the ship is stationed in Mayport, Florida. Um, it's an, an Arleigh Burke Aegis Guided Missile Destroyer. I christened the ship in Bath, Maine. Bath Ironworks built that beautiful ship. I love the people at Bath Ironworks. So I christened that in 1995. Um, at that time, I was one of the youngest sponsors of the, sh of the Navy ship, maybe not anymore, um, and then commissioned it in Staten Island, New York in 1997. It was pretty amazing, too, because when we commissioned the ship, um, that's uh, the same place where the Juno left from. So the Sullivan boys uh, on their newly commissioned ship, the Juno, left from that same area. When I christened the ship, usually you go up and you just say, I christened thee the Sullivans. But instead, I went up and I said, in honor of my grandfather, I christened thee the Sullivans. May the luck of the Irish always be with you and your crew. So that was an extra little special thing. The thing we talked about earlier, too, is people always ask, well, did the bottle break? Because if the bottle doesn't break, it gives bad luck to the ship. And then if you whiff, too, if you completely miss it. So I was really worried about whiffing her, but I did not. I, I slammed that one. Is that the, all of them? I guess that's all of them, yes. Um, the homework I have for you is not difficult homework, but it's homework that you'll have to continue to do, not just today, but always. And that's to thank a veteran. It's so important to make sure that we thank our veterans. And one of the, my favorite things to do is when I'm at a grocery store and I see a veteran with a hat on that says USS Arizona, to walk up to them, shake their hand, and say thank you for serving our country. Um, I, I spoke not too long ago at a Veterans Day assembly for a high school. 
and I gave those high school students that homework. I said, make sure that you go and thank a veteran. It is so important that we thank those who, serve our our serve our, who have served our country because they are truly our heroes. Our heroes are not Michael Jordan or Justin Bieber. Our heroes are the men and women who serve our country. I, when we had our big uh, museum celebration a couple weeks ago, there was a man there who was at Iwo Jima. And he'd actually just gone there for a, a reunion or for a memorial. And to sit and talk to him about his experiences at Iwo Jima. Some of my former sorority sisters had gone to see Madonna in concert that weekend. And I said, I can tell you this guy was much better than Madonna. Absolutely. So in closing, I'd like to also send you, I gave you your homework. I gave you an invitation to come to Waterloo, and I'd like to send a blessing to you. Irish blessings to you, and may the luck of the Irish always be with you. Thank you. We have some time for some questions. So uh, please raise your hand. And Congressman, you're the first. Why am I surprised? <laughs> Just a couple of things, Kelly. Why don't you mention the proximity of the Little Rock to the USS? Yes, thank you. And I did also, my that. question is, tell me what you think about with regard to your two children and this family legacy and how you're approaching that. Okay, excellent. Very good question. Um, the, the, I forgot to mention the Little Rock. When I, some people ask me, when did you first know that your family was, was, was special and, and the different significances, the significance of the Sullivan name. And I was about five years old when we went out to Buffalo, New York, to the Naval Park out there, and USS the Sullivans, the 537, which was the ship my great-grandmother christened during World War II, is right next to USS Little Rock. The USS Little Rock is out there. So I was just a young girl um, going out to Buffalo, New York, which is a beautiful um, Naval Park, just like you have here. You're so blessed to have that. And I just went back again four years ago to answer your next question because the Sullivan Association, which they have a very strong association, gets together every two years for reunions, and they went out to Buffalo. So I'm not five anymore. Many, many years later, I go back again and I bring my daughter. My daughter Kelsey went out with me. It was just the two of us. And she totally gets it, you know. She understands the significance. She loves to be around the, the sailors. She loves to talk to the veterans. So she was with me. And one part I'll always remember is we were down in the mess decks of uh, the ship, the 537. And they have a wall with all these, pit, these hanging pictures of letters that my great-grandmother wrote. And reading those letters. It just brought tears to my eyes. So she and I were reading those letters, and, and she said, um, I'm thinking of you. You're my boys. You know, because she lost her boys, she always felt that the sailors on the Sullivans were her boys. So it was really neat for Kelsey to do that. My kids are very involved. They, um, they like to, to talk to people about it. Um, they didn't do any reports on it, though, during Iowa history. I thought they should have done a report on it. But, you know, Kelsey says, well, I feel like I'm bragging. And it's not like you're bragging. It's, not, it's a story to tell. But Kelsey and Luke both do a very good job of, of making sure people understand the significance of their family, especially when we have people come to visit. I take people on the tour, and we go to different places. And I'll always forget something. And Kelsey will say, Mom, don't, don't forget to tell them about this. So now she already has the whole tour memorized. They've both been on the ship. They, they cruised on the warship with me and uh, they think that's great so they go down to Florida with me to visit the the ship and um, I'm really excited to see what what's going to happen with that Kelsey's already talking about how she wants to christen the next USS the Sullivan's so she wants to be in charge of that yeah what happened to your aunt thank you I, I do forget that aunt Genevieve she was the only um, child left and she joined the waves. She actually joined the Navy waves and spent a lot of time doing recruiting. So that's the other big thing that's important about the Sullivans is I don't think it's about their sacrifice because everybody sacrifices. You can't compare a woman who loses, a mother who loses five sons to a mother who loses one son. They're equal, absolutely in my, in my eyes. But the way the Sullivans persevered after the fact, I think that's why they're talked about today was they continued on and made sure people understood how we need to appreciate our veterans. But Genevieve died at a young age of cancer. But she married a man named Murray Davidson, had two sons, 
Neither of them married, neither of them had children. So the thing that people don't realize is when they talk about the Sullivans, you realize that someone lost five children, which is a, a terrible tragedy, but I don't have the big Irish Catholic family that I would have. It's just my grandma, my dad, my brother and I, just, just us. So yeah, so Genevieve did join the Navy Waves. We actually had a really great interview because we're taking oral histories of people for the museum of a woman who joined the Navy at Great Lakes in Chicago, which is where the boys uh, did their basic training, and Genevieve was the one who enlisted her. And I've, got, I've had the chance to talk to her and meet her. So it's so neat to meet these people who knew my family, you know. It, it's really pretty special. Yeah. Professor, here comes the microphone. Welcome to the Clinton School. Thank you. Um, I think we share something that, that's always been difficult for me to articulate, and that is, is that in some ways, we are the last generation to be connected to the World War II generation. Exactly. And I'm moved by that. And I had an uncle who was uh, a, a belly turret gunner on a, on a B-17, flew over 30 missions. I couldn't help but think how appropriate, however, it is that you are, in fact, a teacher, and the legacy that you leave is special. And, and I, I have to share that about eight years ago, I was in the little village of Margraten, uh, which is outside the, the city of Maastricht in Holland. It's the place of the U.S. Uh, cemetery. I was leaving, and there were two buses arriving. One bus, uh, both buses filled with, with children. And as the kids got off the bus, there was a big kid and a little kid. And they were, on that day, uh, stopping to uh, or creating the, the ceremony that's gone on since 1949 in that village of older kids handing off to the younger kids an adopted grave of a U.S. soldier. And I am moved by that today, and it's, this is the first time I've sort of felt a similar kind of thing. And I went up to one of the teachers and I said, I'm moved by what you all are doing. And she grabbed both of my sh shoulders and she said, you have to know and you have to understand that it's my responsibility to make sure that no child in this village forgets why these young men are in those graves. Yes. So I just wanted to sort of share that with you and celebrate uh, your own agency on teaching and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. What a great story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, we have a question right here. I wonder if you know or maybe our congressman can tell us why we don't have the gold stars hanging in the windows that we had during World War II? Actually, we do. Thank you for bringing that up. I did not mention the gold star mothers of America. Um, we still do, actually. And I, I, have, I brought some pamphlets for you all, too. Um, we do still have them, at least in Iowa we do. It's, it's actually, it's a blue star. So if, when you have an active duty, like actually I, I teach with a, a man who's in the National Guard, and when he was over um, in um, Iraq, his uh, wife had um, a blue star in the window. So you put however many you are, and then, but if something happens, then you put the gold star over the blue um, when they pass away. At the museum, that's one of the few artifacts we have. We don't have very many artifacts from the Sullivans. There were a lot of floods that happened, so we lost a lot of things. My great-grandmother also used to give away a lot of things. But um, we do have the original gold star flag, and it's huge. You wouldn't believe how big it is. But they did a really great job of restoring it because it was in pretty bad shape. But, um, and I have a replica one in my house, but it, it actually goes star, star, and then star in the middle. But we do still have um, the Gold Star Mothers of America. I actually had the opportunity and, and the blessing to go over to Pearl Harbor for the 50th anniversary of VJ Day. And I was there um, with the Gold Star Mothers of America. So they had a big parade, and I was in a convertible with the Gold Star Mothers of America. So they have a, a very uh, great organization still today. So. I don't know, but I have seen blue stars in the windows in, in Iowa. We do have that. Mm -hmm. A neat story that I told the, the congressman earlier, too, when I went to Pearl Harbor, we were really busy, and we had to keep going and going all day with lots of different activities uh, for the whole weekend. And I said, I really want to get to the Pearl Harbor, uh, the Arizona Memorial. I really want to get to the Arizona Memorial. So the Navy guide that took us took us there, but they were on their last tour. You know, they show a video first, a movie, and then you take a boat out to the memorial. And the guy that was in charge said, no, we're closed. We've already started the movie. And I thought, oh, I need to get on there. So the Navy gal said, well, this is Kelly Sullivan from the Five Sullivan Brothers. And the guy said, no, it's not. And then he, he came up to me and he said, if you're really Kelly Sullivan, 
Who was the guy that was on USS Arizona that dated their sister Genevieve? And I said, Bill Ball. And his mouth just dropped, and I got to go out. So <laughs> it was great. It was really wonderful. It was very, very moving. One of the most incredible experiences of my life. Yeah. More questions, please. Yeah. Patrick O'Sullivan or Sullivan? Yes. <laughs> Sullivan. Are you a Sullivan? Is it true that really two, is it split? I mean, yes. That's, that's a great, Myself that's great. Myself and my two we younger Sullivan brothers are O's, O's, O's and, and my two O's. older brothers yeah. are Well, Patrick, I didn't know that. So now I'm going to start calling you Patrick Sullivan O'Sullivan. Yes. That. Yeah. Uh, was it the death of the five Sullivan brothers that caused the military to change? I its always policy? forget that. Thank you for. I always forget that one too. No, actually, there is no law. Everyone thinks there's the Sullivan Law, and that is a myth. There is a policy. There is a policy that was, you know, because of the death of the Sullivans. But there is no actual law. We do have um, siblings serving in the same unit. It's. It depends on commander whoever's in charge of that unit. You have to get special permission, but we do. Because when the war first started, um, someone had contacted me about that because we had an Iowa family that had several siblings in the same unit. Actually, I think it was a father and daughter that were in the same unit, something like that. So we still do have that. A lot of people think that it's a law. It is not a law. Good question. Yes, sir, we have a question right here. Wait for the microphone. It's coming right. Excuse me. Do you know what happened to the second? Destroyer and Sullivan's that came into San Diego after being hit by a Kamasazi. It had a big clover painted on the number one stack. And I never did hear any more about it. Whatever happened. About the, 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 the first Sullivan's? No, the second Destroyer. The, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Brothers. Oh, the first Sullivan ship. The Sullivan's? No, not the first one. The second one, the Destroyer. Okay. There's a, there's a ship in Buffalo, New York, called USS the Sullivans. Well, that may be it, then. Yep. It may be in... Uh... And it has a big shamrock on it? Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. That's one of the only ships that has a, a mascot. Yes, there we got it right there. That's it right there. Yep, that's it right there. Yeah, my great, great, she was supposed to christen the Tawasa, which I did not know that. I just came across that letter not that long ago, and she was supposed to christen the Tawasa, but instead christened um, USS the Sullivan's. President Roosevelt wrote a letter to the family and had the ship named, it was supposed to be, um, what was it supposed to be called? I can't remember. They, they changed the name of the ship to the Sullivan's, and she christened that ship, which served in World War II. All right. Listen. This was a fabulous program. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. You've got... Thank you. Thank you.